Are we there? Uh, okay. Everything's going. Huzzah, huzzah, huzzah. Apologies for the delay. Life went. Or, yeah. IRL stuff went a little bit longer than expected. But. We can. Discord is not up yet. What the heck? What the heck? I'm prepared, I swear. <laughs> That's a reference. I haven't thought about that in a minute. I think everything's good. Everything should be good. I mean, unfortunately, like I said late, we're gonna try and get you right into your match time, but there's the there is the lobby link. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Although the other person who signed up. Hello, hello. Hello. Yes, you did, JP. Thank you. And welcome back, Dad. What's up, Dunce? How's it going? I'm all right. And today is going to be interesting because we have only one match. And one of the people who signed up isn't in the server, and they didn't actually give us a Steam tag. So oh. uh, it might just be an open lobby for 10. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's lovely. Lovely. Yeah, I, I, I get you, JP. It's... <laughs> Might just be a small tent kumite. Give them a little bit more attention. Yeah, I looked at the sign up and went, okay, that's that's all right. And then I didn't re actually fully read Katsu's message and they were just like, yeah, I just kind of want stuff on the uh, uh, lab list. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's just, that cuts our matches in half. And then... I'm surprised yeah. Katsu didn't sign up. Usually they, or they've been kind of on a downward slope and kind of wanted to try and get back into things. Yeah, it doesn't sound like they could make it this week, but definitely had questions, which is what the lab stream was for in the first place. Yep. I'm so bad at labbing in this game. I, I don't lab. I look at stuff in VOD review, and then I say, I think I know how to deal with this, and then I try it in lobby. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, what I'll do is I'll like practice what I set out to practice like once or twice 
and then I'll get distracted because I'll be like, oh, that hit in a funny way, and then I'll just try and come up with stupid mix that doesn't actually get me anywhere. <laughs> or I'll just end up doing the same thing over and over again, like, a hundred times, and be like, all right, I should have it down. And then I go play in a game and drop it, and I'm like, ah, time to not attempt that again. Yeah, no, I... For, for me, it's... I, I'm fine with labbing if it's, like, a consistency thing, so I'll, I'll do lab and so, like, a lab a route, a lab a reset... But after a certain point, to the point where I feel like I should kind of be getting it consistently, mm -hmm. um, I just get bored and don't lab it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I I can't I I can't spend time in lab. I'd rather just press funny buttons in game. Sometimes I feel like my labbing doesn't do enough. Like I, it probably just stems from me playing on analog stick like a freaking animal. But it I mean, always fe feels like there's a layer of consistency to what I'm doing that just isn't there. Like, yeah. whenever I do the Peacock op op Optimal, I often feel like there's just a 1 in 10 chance that this will just drop for no reason. Well, there's a 1 in 20 chance, but that's rolled <laughs> That too. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, so Nope and Triv both play on Analog Stick. I know that for a fact. Yes. Yeah. And it's just like, okay. Uh, they have really nice controllers, though, whereas I have, like, yeah. a $19 Xbox 360 leftover controller. Little little bit of a difference in quality. Yeah. So Ruby believes they know who this person is, so... Well, we'll wait for the ping a little bit. If not, we can just give Tent a couple of... First of fives or bo fives or five flat. I don't know what we'll do. We got we got time to fill. <laughs> we'll, we'll get tent games and advice. This is the goal for the evening. Uh, definitely is the downtime for this event and SG in general. We've got Taku coming up kind of shortly, and then the next thing is Frosty again. And then think when... about going to Frosty. I don't know if anyone else is going, so I haven't really jumped on board with it yet. So Frosty is a good. I know of a good chunk of people who are wanting to go i myself am, am included i don't know if i can swing it yet but pretty sure frosty and cb are like the two events you will consistently see a good chunk of yeah. people at yep and, but i know for a fact uh, a good chunk of cc and d wants to go and i can only assume ps i haven't actually talked with them about about it but I'm pretty sure a good chunk of psm would want to go as well But I don't think we have a, a Jim here <laughs> or a Jeff, whatever. So I think I can just say heck it and uh, throw tent into the fire. First and foremost, I guess I'll ask if anyone in Twitch chat wants to give a go because it's technically an open lobby first for a tent. And if not, uh, Bag and I can kind of just yeah, see what feels best. Yeah, hands for a bit. Sounds good. But I have been working on a very baby Philia. Uh, <laughs> just kind of playing around with her, see how she feels. I've been doing <laughs> content play tent. Hmm. Yeah, sure, hop in here. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, it'll be an interesting <laughs> I'll leave straight join just for the bit would you look at that uh, um okay let's
I think the thing I'm leaning towards is just give ten two BO fives. Sure, sounds good. Sort of see what happens. Give them a little tourney experience. B, <laughs> uh, do you want to go first or should I? Uh, you can go first. Hello, Zali. Hey, uh, am I gonna play? I think I'll play a trio. I just need to make sure I'm still focusing on tense play and not my own. But that's what having another pair of eyes also helps look at. Hello, I have eyes. <laughs> I assure you. And they do help. Nice, that was beautiful. My toes. Nope, your feet. I've never seen it do that before in my life. That I I was about to say, if you did that on purpose, there's no way in hell I'm ever blocking that. I'm pretty sure that's probably Val specific. I've never seen that before in my life. It probably works on Peacock. She's wide too. Ooh, I don't like that beat. Oh, that's more. Okay, we're pressing. Ooh, no. Wow, I didn't really see it. Okay. Game? I thought you were gonna do sniper again for BM. <laughs> How hard, shoot him it, four times. how hard is it to THC it to... I, I didn't think I would be able to pick up OTG list there. But yeah. Nah. In general, you seem very timid and neutral, but you also kind of just press things. It's... Uh, I think there's a lot of unfamiliarity with band, too. Yeah. I mean, I mean, band para has band para, but... That uh, beat... Yeah, but that bikes should have been a free parry. Or at the very least, block into jump in. But instead, the reaction was brass. If, I mean, if you block it, it's still the pair's turn. Eh, true. Let's see how you deal with a little bit of zoning, which is kind of rude saying that you're going to be playing a peak player next. I apologize profusely for that. The block. The push block. Okay, we know how to keep ourselves safe. Though. Like the stagger low pressure. Yep. But getting a little. It very, very, very aggressive on the approach. Nice. I would definitely like to see more crosses. Even on, like, an aggressive note. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Just kind of slow down, play preventative, make sure Parasol isn't setting up tears or just getting away with zoning. Yeah, and if, I mean, if you're in the air above me, it's really hard for me to do much. Yep. That was okay. Right? Ooh. That parry oh, yeah, timing's yeah. a little tricky. But it is possible. Oh, 
Oh, you can't believe that. Yeah, there. And so, do, doing stuff like projectiles makes me to move around them. And you can use that to start trying to condition me. That's... Now, it, it's different because Band is dead right now, but I'm also noticing not a lot of uh, calling Band to try and uh, get a cleaner kind of conversion or mix pre-block, right? Like, you're kind of just running up doing strike low, strike throw, strike low, strike throw, pick grab, etc. Uh whatever Val really excels whenever she's able to be like, oh, you're holding down back, I'm going to do backdash IAD or IAD JMP into the funny left or right or whatever. You know, like, you just kind of want to get your opponent blocking and then make them want to stay blocking while you run your mix as Val. And so for neutral as Val, you actually have a lot, or you have like a spectrum of things you can be doing. You can play yes. incredibly lame, and you can also play aggressive. I don't the, call the I don't call it playing lame. It's playing opportunistic. You want to do up back. You don't want to engage. You want no. The you can coming to you. You can play Tyrone and actually be lame and purposely time people rather than yeah. That's true. Um, but it's so it's you you have a like a spectrum of staying about as far away and running away from them as possible, making approach as obnoxious as you can with t uh, your projectiles and your assists. You can play a kind of more mid-rangey spacey game where you're still using the projectiles, and then you can do what I was saying, where it's like you're hovering in awkward spaces and then using projectiles to make it even worse, and then noticing how they respond, and then you can start calling out the ways they try and deal with it, whether it's the dash jumping at you, you have jump heavy kick to anti-air. Uh, you can air dash away. You can call an assist to catch them on the times they like to approach. You, you start you adapting me? your play to the way they do. Or you can play very aggressive the way like BBP and... I was just going to ask that. Do you run brass or beat extend? Because if you're running brass, you could always just, you know, yeah. uh, do bypass brass. And you pretty much, yeah. I think that's safe. And so now you are in. <laughs> then the, the other way to play is too aggressive so again like bbp or uh bray arsenic and so they will they will still do a little bit of hovering kind of in annoying spots but they're much more inclined to while they're in that spot then air dash forward with jump medium punch or jump heavy punch they will try and catch you out by knowing when you're not blocking and just do random full screen passes which is kind of more of a game feel thing than anything else um so a a train Oh, A train. No, that it's, that actually makes sense. Yeah. So you should be jumping a lot more because that'll make your opponent want to jump, yeah. try and catch and you in the air. You want to hover around the mid screen area where A train will yeah. be like plucking people out of there whenever they try and contend with you. A train and isn't bad. It's just an incredibly. It's a. You you can abuse it in neutral a little bit, but mm -hmm. a good player will play around it, and it'll be much yeah. harder for you to do anything about the where they're dealing with it in neutral. But on hit it gets you a lot of damage if you have those routes. Perhaps. Oh my goodness, it does so much on it. Hey, I'll do one more and then we'll give you the uh, bag best of five. And um, in regards to if you want people to watch, Tyrone uploads like a good chunk of his sets, especially tourney sets. He's a really good time to watch if you kind of want to understand Valentine Neutral. Cloud, I mean, Cloud's Cloud. <laughs> uh, the, like, premier Valentine player. It's another good player to watch. Uh, you can probably scrounge around and find Cheekly Weekly or B Greats, where... BBP is playing and whatnot. Yeah. Or Grey, etc. Yeah, Grey. Grey is also a really good player. Okay, you are blocking them over here. I need to block. Whoa. That's just... I think I'm going to We also... looks like we need to work on our blocking habits a little bit, because... I'm seeing some good push blocks, but there are other times where you kind of just feel like stop blocking. Well. 
Good, Good parry. Shut drop. Not be beaming there. Good snap. Good throw too. Okay. I don't entirely agree with that mash. on matching to open me up. Yep. Just a little bit concerned. Okay. I wanted to do something else than I realized it wouldn't work, so here we are. Wait, there do you use RTG? Uh, yeah, your 5 HP did it because you did it too, too delayed. Oops. This matchup. Oh, oh yeah, I didn't get my beam. Oops. Yeah, so this matchup, you really have to be on point with your parries, as well as... Dash you can blocking. try and get above her with super jump, so, but you're big banned, so it's kind of just... In Skullgirls, you can actually press your dash macro, and then hold back, and you'll dash while blocking. Yep. So that's something you need to do against Robo. Like, it's just, you have to do it. Dash blocking is pretty important. Um, learning how to time your E-breaks so you armor the beam and then break after is also pretty good, but yep. that's incredibly hard. Well, I mean, you, want to, you want to conditioner to always go for like an H-beam or TK beams, right? And then that's whenever you're able to start piloting yourself around them. You know, uh, super jump JHK, uh, parries, that's whenever, like, it's still hard. Don't get me wrong, but that's where you gain most of your screen positioning. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I definitely play mid rangey slow, messing around, seeing what you're doing, pressing the buttons um, to check what you're doing. And so. I think you just need to do more air dash stuff too on block. Like, notice whenever your opponent is push blocking you and react with an up forward IAD option until they show that they can, like, consistently air dash or anti air that. Then, you know, you want to mix up your options again, obviously. Um. I'm pretty sure you can, can you fast fall JLK? Can't you do like JLK JHP and that fast falls it? I forget exactly how that stuff works. That's a Valentine uh, question. You can do the fast fall into like tick throw, uh, low throw. Obviously. Yeah, all those ones. I don't even you, know if that's you, a fast as fall. As Val, she's really, really good at coming down on top of people, and that's what you want to do. Yeah. And so landing on people. Jumping light punch is also a phenomenal button. If you're trying to open someone up or catch them pressing something below you, uh, it's another yep. really good button to land on people with. Especially after you've thrown uh, a light thrust, just like straight down, force them to block, and they're like, okay, I'll catch them falling down, and then you just land on them with jumping light punch. And then whenever you're doing air-to-air -air stuff, just always press JHK. There's no reason to not the, press JHK. Um, and this is a little bit more matchup specific, but especially for like the slower side of the para v val matchup they both zoning can opt to just play lame and not interact and mm -hmm. so you, you can use your crosses to block my tears before they actually get on you you can also use your movement because if you're in the top left corner of the screen if you know how to space around uh m shot you're, you're more or less fine and at certain ranges your h toss gets over para trying to use any just to block it i don't know how i got that rough i don't know and combo consistency also looks like it needs a little bit of work on both characters I am not getting a lot of my inputs today. Oh. 
I don't. I can't tell if that was a misinput or not, but I don't know if we ever really want to be going for ground cycles. Get the corner though, I really like that. Slightly must time the incoming. High ID jump medium punch. Free stem mix. Okay. We we had a different way to go about not getting or getting them to the corner there, but just, just not do the second bypass. And you keep in mind when you are comboing the corpse, you are still building a Nozi. So the longer you spend hitting the corpse trying to get it where you want to, that's less damage you get on incoming after you get the hit. Wake up press. Do we have the combo under level 5? He doesn't need, need level 5, just level 3 here kills. Yep. Not level 1 though. Oop. We didn't have OTG. Yeah, just gotta be a little bit more familiar with our combos, it looks like. Also, Koala, um, sorry, I meant to answer this a while ago. There is a sign-up that goes up just about every Monday. Sometimes that's a little delayed, but it's usually up at least before Tuesday or Wednesday. And that is how you can uh, sign up for these events. And then you can have your own little teach and block, and then depending on how many people show up, you might end up getting a free Kumite because <laughs> it is the slow period for the game right now. Oh, we accidentally threw our... God damn it. We accidentally threw our vial. Am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? Okay. Nice. Cross. Good mix. Keep the corner. I like it. I was holding down back. Good patience, we know. Oh, corner routes. So one thing I'm definitely seeing a lot is you like to jump and then double jump immediately. And I'm not, I'm not gonna say never do this, the, th the thing I want to encourage you to consider is holding your mobility as much as you can until you can see what they're doing, and then you have more resources to react to how they're trying to deal with where you are. And th this is a lot more important in the zoning, so P or Robo, uh, than the other matchups, and I saw you doing it versus P as well. But just in general, one, it's a really obvious habit that people can start looking for and so if they know you're just gonna jump again they can try and catch you with an air throw etc because they know around the space you're gonna be consistently and again the other thing is you just have more resources to then respond to however they're doing because you're effectively you just have a much higher jump than usual rather than actually having a double jump the way you're using it if that makes any sense I don't know what to do. Hold on. Everyone is so aggressive with me. When people are defensive, I don't know what to do. Yeah, that, that was the in thing response. is, I'm not really defensive. I'm just no. You know, that, that was in response not to opening me. myself up. <laughs> oh yeah, that yeah. playing draw or er, dunce. He's always very defensive. Kind of just how you have to play para. You can you can play unga. Watch KJ and tell me you can't play unga. It's just most paraphrase off for some reason. Okay, you can
That's tragic. So, yeah, and one thing you can consider doing after your full screen bypasses, if it didn't hit or if you need to keep yourself a lot safer, canceling into air scalpels is incredibly useful for your character. It's really hard to punish, and it can honestly like make it your turn sometimes. Uh, so if you are going to commit to the full screen bypass, I would highly recommend you do scalpels. And then it, it's also how you get a punish on some things like Peacock, where if she overcommits and you bypass over her head behind her, and then she's like telling H. George to go, you just stab her in the back and get a full combo, yep. and you've gotten it versus the B. Yep. Uh, TK bypass is invaluable. Um, Doesn't even need to be TK as well. Just Yep. I think that for a while, I, I think if you want to approve right now, for a while, in, drop the A train, run Brass or Beat Extend, just for a bit. I think you'll see a lot of improvement in your bow play from that. Aside from that, it's just familiarity with band. I don't know. If, if you want to keep the same team, feel free to rock it. It's just the others will help in neutral. But I again, think that they need to understand where they're able to do more as Valentine. And I think Band's other assists will allow him to understand that, like, just doing tick low, throw low, low, mid, like that's not how foul pressure usually works, right? Yeah, but I don't know necessarily how much other assists will help that. And I'm not oh, the so biggest- much because you do low, you do the two okay, and then you call your assist, and then you do the funny cross up jump heavy punch. Yeah, I don't know. It's for, for me, it's just, they're still relatively new to the game. So yeah, yeah obviously I like, too. I like just letting them rock what they like to rock. And that's why I say just try something new. And I mean, also at the same vein, it's like there are people. So like Dry has done duo A train for a while and found success. That's, it can be done. It just makes you work harder in neutral for Much the point harder, character. Yeah. But Val is a character who can do that. She kind of gets to control a lot of. She people. has all the neutral tools. But, um. So, I think the biggest things I saw. Combo consistency. Yeah, so there, there was mashing. There was a couple of drops that were really painful. Honestly, your mix looked really good once you actually got mm -hmm. in and like were feeling yourself on Val. Um, there's some really nasty stuff. But uh, getting that first hit, it seems kind of like you're, like, as I mentioned earlier, you're getting rid of your double jump almost immediately, which also forces you to play a little bit more aggressive because you can't wait patiently with a tool if you don't have the tool to respond um and then you're also just running forward or air dashing forward and pressing a button and sometimes it's catching people but especially versus a player like me who it takes a good amount to open me up it's gonna take a little bit more than that to uh, actually get going um versus a player like bag who has a tendency to kind of just throw themselves at you and their P, so. I do. I'm random. I'm very random. I know I'm random. Yeah. But that's why it works. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Val corner routes also definitely important. And I'm not going to tell you like you need to learn the routes in order to play the game. But if you're looking to improve, that's probably one of the next things to look at. Yep. But and then overall, I still think you're at a point in the game where playing more, finding more matches. Just getting comfy with the things your characters do. For, for example, um, and you'll likely see this when you're watching other Valus play, is how often they kind of just sit mid-screen or full screen in the upper part of the screen and hover there with their double jumps, with their air dash, with jump medium kick because it air stalls, uh, and like throw crosses, etc. She has a lot of really good movement tools that once you start like getting more comfortable, feeling more fluid with them, you can start really dodging around a lot of stuff. And yeah, my matchup knowledge is also pretty oh, important. God. If you and... don't play against the Peacock, I apologize. <laughs> not knowing that matchup is a nightmare. Yeah, no, I, I can definitely feel it. Um, but so again, the biggest things, combos a little bit, the double jump thing for, it's also important for Bam, especially because he doesn't have an air dash. Knowing when and where to use your double jump is pretty important. Uh, and the mashing. You 
are kind of hoping they're just pressing buttons, but if you play versus someone who's patient, or they notice that you're banking on them pressing something, they'll block all of your reversals because no one on your team has a safe, safe unblock game. reversal. Or a safe DT, for that matter yeah. as well, yeah. And then the, the, the one final thing, after scalpel, or after air bypass, air scalpels is a really good way to work on keeping yourself safe, as well as just catch them pressing something. Borderline on unpunishable leads to a full combo if you get the hit. Uh, I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you and say it's unpunishable because there are consistent punishes for it, they're just difficult. But yeah, yeah. that's why I said borderline. <laughs> D don't 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 go into a match versus JP and throw it out and go, oh crap, because JP would slap you. But I will drop that punish. <laughs> oh me too. Me. Um I think those are my major points. If do you have any other like major questions Tom? really no i don't i don't think i saw anything else wrong with their game plan it's just you know they're new play more all right and yeah if you have any further questions please let us know um especially if that's like something specific that happened and you want to time stamp it uh, ping us right, with it. i this is a huge thing that a lot of people misunderstand about fighting games you don't ever stop mashing. You just know when you can and should do it. Yeah, it's... Right. Mash is a very integral part of defense in fighting games. If you okay. just let your opponent always run and, uh, like, aggro at you, then they're just going to exploit you to the fullest. Yeah. Where if they know, like, you know how to check certain things with the buttons of your own, or, you know, they know that you're willing to risk something like a wake-up SSJ, right? Yeah. It, the... it makes them just think... For that little bit longer, all right, maybe I won't do the meaty 2 OK on Bands Wake Up. Stop mashing predictably is the yeah. better way to put it. Because th there's there's definitely a spectrum of where you can be more patient towards mash heavy. But once you go outside of that, you either let people work on you because you're too afraid of pressing anything, or you just let people get a free counter hit because they know you're going to do something stupid. And n not bursting is a phenomenal habit. That That is, I, I really like the fact that you weren't bursting. Yeah. Like, th that is very important habit to get used to um and also when we're saying mashing it's a, a really bad skullgirls like colloquialism when we say mash we just mean reversal <laughs> yeah it's yeah. well there are times that you do like wake up button and i'm like that was both good and terrible at the same time <laughs> i like, mean the wake up to did, light wake kick up... works yeah works. i was like all right so here comes the mash and then you hit me with light kick and i'm like ah okay he's at least knows that part of it <laughs> yeah it's Uh, is that really it for the stream? So we actually had the other person just show up right now. So we oh, can okay. give them the usual uh, five games because, I mean, we still have time. Ah, uh, yeah, so, sure. It sounds good. Uh... Jeff, I, I think I remember them from forever ago in the Salty Noob server. Yeah, I yeah. think they play uh, Bayo Robo something? And we'll just make this an open lobby for JF. Um, yep. Yeah. And PBGCC timing is kind of something you just get used to. It's definitely... Yep. The best advice I can give you is just keep trying to go for it, and you'll know if you messed it up because you got hit. And don't be mad at yourself because you got hit because you were still trying something. It's... The, the, the thing that's really important to keep in mind is, like, if you're trying to learn something new... Or if you're trying to explore, like, a new solution to a problem you might have, it's like, if it doesn't work, or if you mis-execute, that's fine. You're, you're, you're experimenting. And any knowledge gained, even, even if it doesn't work, is still, okay, I can't do this, I know I can't do this anymore. So it's... It can get a little frustrating, but... Uh... You'll, you'll get there. Yep, yeah, these streams are for feedback and advice, specifically. The, sa the Saturday... Look to level up your game or whatever. Yeah, the, the, the Saturday streams are we'll watch your gameplay. In this case, we played because there was no one else to play for them. Um, 
and then give you advice on things that we think you need to work on. Uh, but, VOD review. We also do VOD review. Or is that a different day? Uh, VOD review is Thursdays. Oh, my bad. Yes. I didn't remember if you didn't. And that's kind of, that's that's me on my channel, kind of associated with. Game. It's weird. It's it's in a weird limbo state. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, again, open intermediate lobby for Sunny Jim, and uh, I'll give it like three minutes. And if not, I think I'll yeah. If nobody comes in, in here, we'll uh... I'll hop in and play. Yep. All right. Uh, if you're in the Discord, the lobby links there. Otherwise, but... are we right the Discord? There we go. Bayo Squid Robo. Good time. The evil. Didn't quite get the confirm. Good block. We really like Stand Heavy Punch. Fish. Ooh. Expecting the mash. They don't agree with the squiggly call right now. Yeah, calling squiggly here is incredibly dangerous. And now all of her health is gone. Oh, drop. I really want to see us get a hit and snap on the end, but... Checked out. Ooh! I like the idea, it just didn't quite work with the assist behind them. So, again, one thing... Yeah. You're autopiloting into calling your assist at the end of your strings, don't do that. And so, uh, to reiterate on my point about snapping the band in, I think the thing to consider when you're hitting the assist, etc., is you, you can spend that meter, and it's I will argue it's almost always a good choice. One, because especially if you're in the corner, you're in an advantage because oh, incoming yeah. in the corner is always on your terms. As well as you're spending the bar that you might not necessarily be able to use on a damage super. But if you're getting enough life off of them, then you, you're getting more damage value than your damage super would have been giving you. So if you have an assist bleeding as much as that band was, I would highly recommend snapping it as soon as you get the hit. Or if you need to spend on Dizzy to get the corner carry first. That's a really good choice. We got pushed off baited. Classic, one low into one high. <laughs> we got the back dash. I do like the fact that we know Stun Heavy Punch is a good tool. We are a little bit too... I don't know if I want to say optimistic, but too ready to press it when Philly is a little bit too close. Because she'll just... It has a good amount of startup, and so you can get caught directly. And now I'm just getting mixed. I'm getting it exploding right now. Good recognition at the max on Dizzy. That was the same size mid, what happened? That was the same size low. Okay. This isn't saying it's easy, but we are really struggling to get this Philly off of us. Mm -hmm. And Brass definitely makes it a whole lot harder. Uh, I mean, first Philia, step? We, or Philia with Brass against Robo with their back to the corner. It's yeah. kind of just... I mean, all the, all the characters are struggling a little bit. We, we have gotten push block blade, the bladed, baited a little bit. Um, we're getting backdash and then getting caught after it. So we need to realize we probably need to hold. A what a call bit. out. We didn't set up the safe jump though. Just another big punch. Get the chair. Oki. That one. That's a really good Oki. I just want you to clean it up a little bit because it was obvious which was going to hit first. 
Arata and Swiftbox Special. There is so much pressing going on right now. Yep. Starting to recognize they mash a lot, and you just waited for it. Mix. I honestly would have rather we just killed there with the hit rather than go for the extra. Hit. But you might have already been autopiloted again to it, so I can't really blame you for that. But not killing here is a really bad issue. Because now instead of being in control of the game, we're down a character and the Philly is in control of the game. This is a not good situation for Robo. Okay. Yeah, at that point, I don't know. I didn't see if you had already used your double jump. Uh, you can still jump cancel, I'm pretty sure, after a parry, and you can also special cancel. It's it's five games flat. Decision to slow it down a bit. I say as he immediately does blitzer. Okay. Good block, good push block. Punish this. Look at a sing SPO. Yes, even without the charge, they still would have been enough recovery. Good block, he learned. Good block, good push block. Stand heavy. I really hope that was an up back stand heavy kick. Because stand heavy kick in neutral is not your friend. Unfortunate. Unfortunate confirm. Nice. Oh, oh no, you should have done heavy. Right idea, wrong button. We need a little bit of familiarity with our character. And, and install is a very different character, so it's understandable if you don't quite have yeah. both there. And um, I will encourage you to work on trying to hit confirm the install lasers, because... That's an incredible tool to have. Yeah, you, you don't need to do it predictively. You, you can wait to see them fall to the ground and then still go into Magnet and have time. It's tight, but it's there. You still can do that. Rather, just, rather than just banking on a hit and spending a meter whether it happens or not. Hey, what's the round start? Here comes the giant fist. 
Ew, that JLP hit cross. I hate that. It was fine. Switch block baiting. Good push block. Great punish. Again, we're calling our assists at really low life. What a confirm. Okay, so although a lot of it was kind of just Philia doing Philia things, a couple things I noticed that I think are pretty important are we can commit to a slower game plan especially if we're kind of getting run over um boxing out affilia is one of the strongest things to do and you were you were trying to do that at the start with stun heavy punch and it worked a couple of times and then we kept trying to go for it because it worked and then we kept using it in situations where it was not the right tool afterwards we got a little bit trigger happy on that button if Philia is jumping at you and there isn't an assist coming at you, there's nothing wrong with holding up back. You can still there get Earth on there. Yes, however, she has to con or spend bar or be in pretty specific states in order to convert off of her air throw. But, yeah, it's... Land cancelling Philia is a very integral part of defending against her. Because if you block one of her air buttons, it's now your turn. Or if you land cancel one of your air buttons, it's now your turn. Yeah. And so the, the thing I wanted to see a little bit more is you, you got the hits and you push blocked her out pretty well. And then there were, especially like the game we just saw, you caught her overextending with an SBO and you got out like that. There, there were a couple other times where we push blocked and then we were a little bit too afraid to do anything. And so... There, there are a couple of options Philia has after you put Flocker out. She can IAD back in, she can dash in with a spaced low, so depending on how far away she was pushed back, she can 2 light kick or 2 medium kick. Um, and assuming they're running a dash mode, Garo, that's a dash block, so... Yeah, but as well as they can call an assist to layer that. But the, the, there are a couple of different tools, and depending on the flavor, like the choice they end up going for, you have a couple of different responses. And so, for, for example, for Squiggly, if you think she's going to be IADing back in, you can up back and either get and push block her out again, or if you have enough space, and this is kind of something you just get used to with time, you can either just jab her. Squiggly jab is really good at stuffing IADs, and it's a six frame button. Jabs are really useful in this game for that. Um, can jab her to stuff the IAD, or if it's really far enough away, you can up back jump light kick, and she like smashes into the massive box that is leviathan's tail because jump light kick is a phenomenal button uh for lows up backing okay. kind of gets you watched also an option against philia jumping at you because of the low profile nature of it yeah it's and i'm not going to be able to walk you through every scenario for every one of your characters but fully expect the philia to be coming back at you after you push block and thinking about the different answers you have um and if you have time to do them. And that's kind of something you can either work out in the lab or just kind of have figured, like, just play a little bit more, test them out, see if you get hit or not, and then you know if they work. <laughs> um, and th that's a major part of dealing with philia pressure, which is kind of where Pickle Rick kind of just got the run their game plan for a lot of those games. Uh, but the blocks and push blocks when you got them were pretty good. Uh, th that is the first step to dealing with Philia. The other part of that, or the other part of this set that I saw a lot of was you calling your assists when they're bleeding a lot, or even not necessarily if they're bleeding, but they're just close to dead. Uh, Brass exacerbates this issue by just giving them a massive armored wall of a heavy hitting counter call assist. 
But in general, a smart player will see you calling a low assist and just punish you for it. They'll kill you. They'll, they'll kill the assist. And so we're, we're calling our assists not, almost not on cooldown, but like Bagot I said, we're ending a lot of our strings with it to keep ourselves safe. Um, and so we're getting predictable with how we're calling our easy to kill assists. So it's really hard for us to then cover them and make sure the opponent doesn't punish those bad assist calls afterwards. And I kind of said that in a very long-winded way, but TLDR... Don't call think your assist so much. Yeah, think about when you're calling your assists and if you can prevent them from being killed when they're out. Uh, yeah. That and dealing with Philia were the two major things I saw. And a little bit of routing. Uh, yep. so had some unfortunate drops. I did like the mix, though. It looks like you kind of understand what your characters can and can't do for mix. Some of the setups were a little bit reliant on your opponent not pressing anything, whether it was mashing or jabbing. Uh, but having mix like that isn't bad as long as you can deal with people pressing there and you have other mix that's a lot tighter. So that's the one caveat I would say. Because sometimes if you know they're afraid, feel free to just like torque all over them and then get a free hit. <laughs> if they let you do stuff in their face, take it. Hey, uh, I think those are my main takeaways about those games. Yep. Uh, yeah, so if you have any other questions, please uh, let us know. And then if any other questions come up later, again, you can just ping us after the fact. And, uh... Oh, no, this is an attorney. Uh, Kuma, this is just a weekly... Uh, kick rates uh, where we can two people sit down play some games and then we kind of review your play and be on the lookout for ways that you could be improving I will say there is a CC and D bracket tonight yes. if you're looking for a tournament today it is in an hour it's starting in an hour do I want to enter that no will I so th this was an open lobby maybe for or not maybe mostly for sunny so uh most of the vice was directed towards them um the things i will say to you and this is more from our recent sets is you over th there are a couple of things um you overextend and don't recognize when it's not your turn as philia anymore so, as I was saying, like, I'm push blocking you out. I know I can jab here, and you didn't seem to know it wasn't your turn anymore. So you didn't respect it and let me get a counter hit by contesting you just going a little bit too far. The other thing I will say that stuck out to me a lot is you don't burst, which is really good, but you still mash a lot. And so the way I was able to just deal with you was I just do something that looked vaguely reset-like and then empty hopped and knew the SSJ or the Dynamo or whatever mash you were going to do was coming. And then I'd get a free counter hit afterwards. Um, so your, your game plan and your responses to a lot of things players do when you're in danger are really predictable. The, 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 that's the bits of advice I can give you, not necessarily as much from this set, because this set you were doing really well and taking the space that Sunny was giving you. Um, but that's the little main tidbits I remember from playing you recently. I mean, it's really good you're doing it on reaction. You just need to tone it down a little bit, because then players will not be able to say, I can just block here. Um, but yeah, it's it, it was really interesting because uh, I watched you play and then I played versus you. I'm like, he mashes, but it's not a burst. It's never like, it's never you're just turning the stick. <laughs> it's a smart way to play, especially whenever you're still not entirely there on defense. It's kind of what I do to a small extent. I, I have the problem where... I only mash after I've blocked the first thing. 
I'm really, I, I'm really tentative to just pillar in neutral sometimes. Well, you, play, you play para, so pillar is a lot different because, like, just kind of you know quarter circle two punches isn't an option for you. Yeah, no, but but for it's it's for me it's like I know you're gonna dash up low, but I opt to block it rather than pillar. <laughs> yeah. And it's like some I should just frame one be uh, pillaring some things, but I'm just like no, I'll block it. And then my my brand of defense is I will push block you back out and fight for space that way because i kind of just run at you and half the time don't press buttons and then try and push walk you into the corner and keep you there yep but and um you throw at us and make us wait for those to go away while doing high low stuff and it's like <laughs> oh this is annoying yeah um but yeah there's, there's... at least has the common decency to kill me <laughs> okay um yeah so kuma uh this itself is not a tournament i will link you the cc and d tournament uh the, the, this this community only hosts a tournament on Wednesday evenings at 8 p.m. This event on Saturdays at 7 p.m. is a educational. Uh, Here is the CCND tournament. Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah. And then here's the challenge. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. Then Monday you have the TBC Cheekly Weekly. Fridays you have Ron Coon at. 8.30 EST, I think, is when it starts. Uh, and Cheekly Weekly, correct me if I'm wrong, I think is 7 EST. I, I have no clue. It's 7 or 8, but yeah, it's it's all that. I've been spending a bit of time in the TBC and Discord. That place is a nightmare. <laughs> Monday are my people's turn. I always just miss. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. But yeah, um, on that note, I think... That's all from us for today. It was a relatively short day, but we were able to stream. make it work. Uh, yeah. Uh, unless Thanks they're for coming out, everybody. It was good playing, good talking, and good luck out there. Yeah. Uh, on that note, have a good night, everybody. Take care. Drink plenty.